Good morning. Welcome to Ask Coffee Online Culinary Academy. My name is Chef Caesar. Today I'm going to show you how to make something really easy to do, which are pickle beets. You know, this is summertime months are gone, fall is coming in, and some of us probably have a nice garden at home. They will have an overabundance of beets, and you know, maybe we don't know what to do with them. And a lot of us grew up with the idea, you know, since we we're little kids, we were told that you know this is the worst vegetable, like along with Brussels sprouts and cabbage, that you know they're not really good to eat, but Actually, it's a really good uh, vegetable. It's a beautiful, you know, has a beautiful color. Here I got some nice uh, red beets. They also come in you know, golden. And uh, this is very nice, you know, for, as a vegetable, we got like baby golden beets. They're, they're beautiful. You mix them with some red beets for a nice presentation of the dish. These are bigger beets, you know. I mean, you can use it, this in a salad. You know, you don't have to cook them. You can just shred them as, a, as you do with carrots. And then you, or you can cook them too and then pick them like I'm going to do right now. And uh, beets have been used for, you know, many years. And also, you know, they're colored, they're pigment. They're, they, they have been used as a, uh, a way to dye clothes, fabrics, and uh, lipstick, believe it or not. And uh, also, you know, they, become, they make it as a powder, too. This is how it comes. And uh, not only that, red beets, you know, they make sugar as well. I'm sure you know that. And there's so many different uses. Today, we're going to just do them with pickle beets, and uh, we're going to put them in a jar. That way, if you don't want to, you know, eat them right away, you can save them for the winter months, which a lot of, you know, people do, especially in the old days, they had to, you know, kind of had a way to, you know, conserve their food and uh, kind of save it for later use. And this is a great way, you know, pickling. You put them in a nice uh, mason jar. We're going to do that now. What you do to start with, we get to use some uh, pickling salt. And uh, what is pickling salt? And I'm going to show you right now. I have uh, this uh, box of pickling salt and I got regular salt. What it is, pickling salt is a more pure salt. And I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to dissolve some water, some salt in some water. And I'm going to do some regular salt. This is just regular table salt. I'm going to put some in this water. You're going to see uh, this water is going to become a little, you know, murky, like a little cloudy. On the other hand, I'm going to put some uh, pickling salt. And you're going to see the difference. This liquid is going to be really much clear like you know it was at the beginning it doesn't turn like you know cloudy like it does with a regular salt so this is much uh, pure salt very pure and it's mostly done for pickling you know vegetables meats it's way until settle as you can see the difference this is like much more cloudy and this is like clear so this uh, has less chemicals and uh, so it's much a much purer salt to, that we use for pickling. So this is, uh, and you find it like, right now you can find it right where you find these mason jars in the store. They have this uh, all kinds of stuff like spices, like pickling spices, and because it's in you know, all the canning season that we do in the fall. So this is where you find the salt. Most of the time you also find it where they have the regular salt and the regular grocery store. But right now they have everything pretty much together. When I got my mason jars this morning, I you know saw a bunch of stuff that is used for pickling, you know, different uh, meats and vegetables. So this is what it looks like. You know, one's like nice and clear, and one's like a little, you know, cloudy. So this salt's much purer than the regular salt that we do uh, for table salt. What you want to do, you want to, you know, kind of to get pickled at your uh, beets ready. You want to cut the tops off. If they're really too big, you can cut them in half with a quarter, so you can uh, boil them. Just wash them really good before you, you cook them. And th this way, you know, I'm going to save some of the juice from the liquid when it's, uh, when they're boiling right now to like, you know, make my, my pickling uh, solution. I'm going to just take some white vinegar here, some uh, pickling salt. I'm going to do some sugar and some uh, cloves. And I'm just, I want to show you the, how we do this. I want to make sure the beets are kind of, you know, cooked before we go and uh, make our mixture but how do you know when the uh, beets are ready to, to be taken out well it's really easy as you can see i'm gonna you know stick my paring knife in here and when they you know it's hard to pull out you know when they're like raw you stick it in but this, this doesn't come out really easy but when they're cooked properly if you stick your knife in there you know it's gonna come out really really easy it's, just, it's gonna just pull out but right now they still have to go a little more that way you know you know when they're done and like i say if they're too big you can cut them in you know half and quarters that way you kind of speed up the cooking process. But you want to boil the beets. You know, this is probably going to take, you know, I already had them on there before we start the show. So about three more minutes, we're going to take them out. We're going to rinse them with some cold water, peel them, and then we're going to slice them. And then we're going to, you know, go ahead and, and, and finish the, the canning process, you know. And then what do you want to do? You want to 
Can I sterilize your mason jars? I already did that ahead of time. You want to put your jars in boiling water for about 5-10 minutes. This is going to make them sterile, nice and clean. You also want to put the lids in there. Maybe you want to buy some extra lids. Sometimes when you like uh, can these jars, the lids don't work. The seal kind of pops. And uh, so you, you, you can buy extra lids just in case your uh, jar didn't work because when they, they're like uh, canned properly, there's a little thing on top of the jar that's going to push down. And if you are able to push it down, again, the, the pressure is going to kind of hold it in. And you're not going to be able to move the lid up and down. If you do, you got to start over again. Take the lid off, put a new one, and kind of start the, the process again. But again, you want to like, buy some extra lids just in case they don't work. I'm going to take my jars out of the liquid right now. Like I said, I had them there for about five minutes. Uh, submerge them in boiling water this way. We uh, are sure there's no bacteria in there when we like can them because we want to be able to store stuff in there. It should be safe. And this is a good way to do that. So I'm going to take them out of here. The water's still pretty hot, so. I'm going to put some more water here because we're going to be uh, using this uh, pot to like boil our jars. Kind of go just halfway right now and then we're going to lower the jars in there. But before we do that, we've got to make sure our beets are ready to you know, cook, ready to go. To slice. It's out of the way here. As you can see, it's going to be a really easy process. I mean, if you have all uh, the vegetables, you can do it with different vegetables, as you know. You know, you can can tomatoes, make a tomato sauce, peppers, you name it. Just the process works the same way, but you might not have to cook them as long. For example, if you don't like canned tomatoes, they, you only want to put them in there really quick, blanch them, and, you know, take the skin off, and then you're going to follow the, you know, the canning process. Like I said, the way we know we're going to do it right now, but for this... Uh, instance we're gonna wait until our red beets are, are pretty much done you know they, all, they get in there see my knife comes out really easy now it doesn't stay there same thing when you cook potatoes the same way you know if you want to check them if they're done you want to poke them with your knife if the knife comes out easy it means that they're done so it's really an easy way to to test for your vegetables for doneness and now we're going to take we want to save some of this juice the liquid that we're uh, boiling the beets in that way we can mix it with our uh, pickling juice that we're going to make in a little bit so we want to kind of Save some of that before we dump it all out. I got a little bowl over here. I'm going to put some of this juice, about a cup or so. Then we're going to drain the rest of it. We want to put them in some cold water so we can peel them. If you have some ice, put some ice in there too. That way it's easier and quicker to cool them off. So I got our cooked beets right now. Now we're going to make our liquid. I'm going to put some of this juice back in there. As you can see, it's really nice and red. It's a real nice color. Stem in here, we want to take it out. Then we're going to add our uh, sugar, our pickling salt, and our white vinegar. We're going to let it, let it boil for a little bit so the sugar and salt dissolves. In the meantime, we can peel our, our beets over here. I think we got a question over here. Uh, when you do the hot cucumbers, will you be doing the same thing? The hot cucumbers? Yes. Will, will you be using the same pickling technique for the hot cucumbers? Well, you 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 don't cook the cucumbers. Uh, you just want to you know slice them, but you can follow the same technique when you're making the the liquid. The question was, if you, when you do the cucumbers, if you follow the same uh, technique, actually you don't cook the cucumbers because the vinegar is going to take care of that. It's going to kind of make them crunchy. And it's a funny thing, you know, 
vinegar acts it's a it's a nice way to make them nice and crunchy but again because the pigment in the vegetables you know there's a the pigment the, the vegetables have they act different with with uh, vinegar than uh, green vegetables do with chlorophyll when you have green vegetables and you add vinegar that's going to kill the colors where well, you see like you know pickles and like cucumbers they're kind of they're crispy but they're going to be like kind of they're going to lose some of the color in this case, it works opposite. They're gonna keep their bright red color. It's gonna be really bright red because the vinegar acts, you know, with, uh, reacts with the pigment and the, and the vegetables. That's gonna be, you know, nice and red. Otherwise, you know, it works the opposite. Like I said, with green vegetables, like broccoli. If you cook broccoli in vinegar, it's gonna turn like brown. It's, it's really, you know, not too nice looking. So you wanna peel them. As you see, it's really easy to peel. It really soft. And we want to slice them so we can fill our jars with this. And you can store this. Once you have them, you know, done properly, you can put them, you know, they don't have to be refrigerated. You can put them in the shelf, you know. As you can see, your hands are going to turn nice and red. I love this color. It's really beautiful. And you don't want them cook overcook them either. You know, which might make them nice and uh, tender, but not not overcook. Otherwise, because the vinegar is still gonna make them nice and soft. Once you put them in jars, that's gonna help you know soft them up a little more. As you can see, it's nice. Now the liquid's coming up to the boil over here. Now this thing is boiling. I'm going to change my pot. I'm going to put my uh, other pots so we're going to submerge our jars in here. Once they're filled up with the vegetables and the liquid, we're going to get it ready. You can also, you know, do them roasted in the oven, but not for pickling, just for regular, like, you know, eating. They work great. You just roast them in the oven like you do a baked potato. Oh, they're, they're amazing. They become really nice and sweet. So my hands are all, you know, color now because from the juice. Now we're going to fill our jars. We're going to slice them. My shirt glass works better. jars right now then we're going to top it off with some of the liquid right down for the with the vinegar sugar also I put some of this uh, cloves in there right now
Yeah, but another question over here. Um, about how much uh, salt, sugar, and vinegar did you use? Well, I use uh, one tablespoon of salt, about a cup of sugar. I'm going to have the recipe put up there too as well, along with the video. Uh, it, I, it actually calls for 10 pounds of beets. I, I didn't do 10 pounds, as you can see. So I cut, I cut back. I used probably two cups of vinegar, one cup of sugar, and one tablespoon of salt. But like I say, I'm going to have the recipe up, you know, along with the video. Now we're going to put some of the, this liquid in here. Just kind of go over the, cover the beets. We've got too many in this one here. Okay, we got it in there. Now we want to seal our jars. Jars nice and tight. They only got a little small pot. At home, if you get like a big pot, that's uh, that's even better. You can put a lot more jars in there in one. So we're gonna put this in the water. Right now, it's only halfway up. I want to fill it up all the way. I want to be able to cover the whole thing. So this will be submerged in the water. And you want to leave them in there for about 15 minutes. And now uh, you also have to check them. Once you take them out, they should be like, the lid should be nice and sealed. It should be like, if you press it down, it shouldn't go anywhere. Because, you know, if it goes up and down, it means it's not it's not done properly. You got to start over again. Maybe the seal is not working right. You got to get some, uh, put a new lid. The best bet is to put a new lid in there and start over again. And they do have extra little box, extra lids that you can buy. Because sometimes they're like, you know, they don't work, the seals break, or whatever the reason might be. So you want to be, you know, be ready. Because you don't want to waste the pickle, the pickled vegetables inside. You just want to put a new lid and just put it back in the, in the boiling water. It's going to work again. And you want to put the water about one inch above. And let it come to a boil. And then you're going to leave them there for about uh, 15 minutes. And after that, you take them out, you let them cool off in the shelf, and then you just store them for the winter time. And you can use them any time. I mean, just out of the jar too, they're great. You don't have to do anything else. So you can put them in the salad, in the cheese platter, or you know whatever you know the case might be. You can, I mean, store this in the shelf life. I mean, they can be there for a long time because you know they're going to be sealed, and they got you know vinegar is going to act as a preserver too. You know, it's going to make them you know stay crunchy. And uh, the color is going to be beautiful because, you know, like, like I said before, it's going to help, you know, maintain the bright red color. And you're going to, you know, see this is really easy. Like, so it's really, the process is really simple. And it's, if you have, like, an overabundance of beets at your home in the garden, I mean, this is a good way to, to save them and use them, you know, in the winter months, you know, that comes. And you can, you know, do it as a gift for the family or even bring them to the, to the market, you know, the farmer's market. You can do this. It's just one of the... Those things that, you know, sometimes people don't know what to do with them. They see them, they, they, they hold, you know, beets and a whole abundance of vegetables. But this is a good way to, to use them later on. And you don't have to waste them. And you can, you know, use them in later months, like I said. Well, thank you for being here today. And after this, like, I left them for 15 minutes. And then once they, their boiling is done, and you take them out, just take them out of the water. Be careful because you don't want to burn your hands. If you want to let them cool off in there a little bit, that's fine. They'll use them, you know. So there's some uh, special, you know, I got another question over here. Well, I use white uh, white vinegar. You can also use apple cider, but you know most of the recipes call for white vinegar. The question was, which vinegar is uh, mostly used for pickling, you know, vegetables? And I say, you know, white vinegar is uh, mostly used, but it's also there. Sometimes you can use, you know, apple cider, but white vinegar is the more most common use. Anything else? Well, again, thank you so much for being here today. Like I said, hopefully you can just, you know, try this at home. It's really easy and simple to do, and you can do it like other vegetables, like tomatoes, peppers, and whatever you got at home. It's, it's really easy, like I show you, and you can do it too, all right? Thank you, and have a nice day.